have now is just a little, it's just this thing. So this is supposed to be a wave function for a, just a little particle. It's beautiful. So, so I have the, so the space, so we're doing this in one dimensional space, but we need three dimensional space to actually like see the entire wave function because it has an input and it, the output is a complex number. So we're going to need an, an real and imaginary axis. So yeah, uh, so I'm going to, Basically, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to try to make a clone of the simulation that, um, <laughs> that UD prod made, which was just excellent. <laughs> um, it's harder than it seems though, because, okay, so for, first, first off, how do I make this wave move to the right? Uh, so... I can make this wave move to the right, but yeah. So we're gonna need to make it move to the right using the right um, formula for motion in quantum physics, and that happens to be Schrodinger's equation. So basically, I'm gonna have to implement Schrodinger's equation in code. I'm not really sure how that'll work, but if I see it, then maybe I can dissect it and... Um, Put it into the code. And then you, the play button is going to function. And what is it going to show? A wave. It's going to show this wave transporting itself to the right of the screen. Not that exciting. <laughs> um, I think it's quite exciting. <laughs> I also programmed this little measurement device, which can measure the wave so if i want to do that i can do that how are you measuring the wave so basically you ha have this so the way that it's done in the video is like for example okay so i've implemented this for a classical particle so let's just make it a particle for a second uh so i'll so i'll get rid of the wave function for a second and just have a simple particle Particle equals what? A particle. And the particle is going to be, let's say, this x coordinate, this y coordinate, and this speed. So now what we're going to do. is we're going to render the particle. Hmm. Oh, it's called run. So I've implemented So I just changed it so that it's a classical particle, not a quantum particle. The reason why is because I have the code for actually moving it. see it's moving along the one-dimensional space that I set up. Um, now, the reason why I did this is because I have a measure, measuring device. And I can make a new measurement device. Hmm. 
which measures the particle. And I can run the measurement device also. So basically what this is, this is the measurement device. Um, it looks like this, not that I'm gonna, this is the little cube art that I made, not that exciting. Um, I think it's cute. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna wait for like two seconds and then it's going to check if the particle is within this range. Okay, so it's not, and if I put the particle in a different place, that it will be in the range and it'll become green. So the reason I did this is so that if I have the quantum particle, so not the classical particle, but the quantum wave function and I measure it, of course the output will be random. <laughs> so yeah. And after the output is, is settled, after the output from the machine here has, has been confirmed, the wave function will actually change because the, because we measured it and so it'll move differently. Oh, so it'll be like, uh... A digital double slit experiment. Not really a double slit experiment because it's not a double slit experiment. <laughs> it's only in one dimension and it's just a measurement device, <laughs> but yeah. Do you think you'll actually get there? Will you manage to? I, I might, but again, I need to implement the Schrodinger equation, which is not an easy task. So if the particle is anywhere in the blue range, after two seconds, it'll turn green. Otherwise, it'll turn red. And I'm going to implement this for a quantum particle. Well, the thing is that the grid is not actually infinite, so if I zoom out enough, <laughs> You can see the edges of the grid will show. Try to make the grid as, as large as possible so you can see this is huge. But yeah, if you zoom out enough, the edges will still be visible. Let's try again. It's so entertaining for some reason. And if I place the particle, so actually, you know what? If I make it not move, then it's going to turn red. If I make it move slower, also red. Like, okay, so if I make it move like this. What's it gonna do? It kind of, it just overshot it. What if I make it a speed of 4.5? Kind of a fun little game. Eh, no, not really, 4.25? Um, so yeah, that worked, but it wasn't like in the middle of the blue range, it was somewhere to the right of the blue range. <laughs> Not to the right of the blue range because it was still in the range, but anyway. <laughs> now the particle is just gonna move <laughs> aimlessly. So the video, by the way, when, when they measure the quantum wave function, so normally it's just gonna glide to the right but when it measures it, it cuts it in such, it cuts the wave function in such a, well, not really strange, but like 
such a weird way for the quant for the Schrodinger equation that it just sort of like goes all over the place and go get goes into chaos. <laughs> After the measurement, before the measurement, it just moves simply to the right. But after it, it just get goes into chaos. <laughs> so you're hoping to achieve the same result, yeah. experimentally, so to speak. What did they use, or is it just an animation? I don't know what they used. I mean, they explained the, like okay, like the formula that I used. They actually explained the formula that they used. Um, which was, um, this. <laughs> so I implemented that in here, in the code. And so, yeah, I, I implemented that there. The formula for the wave function. So, yeah. Uh, so they... So it wasn't an animation because the wave function was like really precise, and I think the Schrodinger equation was also precise. Oh, and they it, have implemented the Schrodinger equation. You think? In yeah, I think scene. they have because otherwise it won't be. Yeah. Well, then it is possible. You won't be the first one. Yeah, I know. Um. Don't. Once I, I I haven't even like figured it out. Like I I don't even like understand it yet. So I'm gonna actually need to um understand it. Take, okay, where is the particle? Oh, the particles got out of the clipping plane. Do we have it in the? This one you've used for the code already. Let's look at the speed. Um, yeah, the speed is also something that's not really... Um, and, the, and Schrodinger equation quantum is mechanics. page 245. Schrodinger equation. Hmm. So this is all actually not that bad. So this is just this. So this is just um some constants here. I can figure that all out. Um. This is just basically like how much it changes with your. Um, like the, the wave function, like how, what's its slope? Um, and then this is the wave function itself. Uh, I'm kind of worried about what's on the right hand side of the equation though. Because what is this? What the heck is this? Isn't that a constant? It's, well, okay, just look at it. It's not a constant. <laughs> just look at, look at this. The Hamiltonian operator. 